Uh, no, but it is now. Should be recording now. Check one, two. Check one, two. Yep, three, four, five, seven, eleven, teen. Check one. <laughs> Good morning. Are you all bushy, 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 bushy tailed and what the hell they call? No, Are you I'm awake? Nice. No, no, no. Good evening from you. Good, Good morning evening, from Glenn. You. Good morning, guys. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, good evening, Glenn. Because it, it is that we're wishing each other a good whatever we're having. Yes. Not a good whatever <laughs> you're having. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. A wee chat. A wee chat. Now, where were we? Yeah. It's, uh, well, I'll, let me. I'll, I'll try and give it my take, and then you can fire back and anything I've missed. Um, I think we. The last video we did was to categorise the uh, different objects that are involved in our world: um, yep. the physicals, the sensibles, and the mentals. <clears throat> and it was a kind of theoretical conversation we were having, right? Where. We did have the one example about outer space fantasy, but what might help make that clearer for other people is to bring more examples of how mental objects, sensible objects, and physical objects and, and are not being correctly discerned. Um, and mental objects in particular are being used to brainwash us into having you know, fantastic beliefs. One of those fantastic beliefs is, of course, the nonsensical heliocentric fantasy, which, which we have been all instilled. Um, and one of the goals of this conversation, I think, is to point people to their reasoning processes, um, show examples of how these mental objects influence um, how people perceive the world. Um, and if we can get more people thinking about that, then it improves the numbers and and hopefully that's uh, um, a way to break the spell uh, because we still need more numbers, especially in academia and intelligentsia, um, which is a, yeah, how should I say? Um, as you said, Glenn, I think um, it's more akin to brainwashing than, than education. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I still see it as a war. An information war that's being fought with words. And at the moment, sadly, it seems like they're winning. Maybe uh, our efforts, maybe our efforts will, will do something towards changing that. Maybe, maybe people will start attending to things that they're not attending to at the moment. Things that are just flying right by. So that we accept, or that the majority of people seem to be accepting absurdities as realities. Yeah, I think the the fact that it's a war for our attention is definitely correct, and language is what's being used to transmit those beliefs into our heads as mental objects that we're supposed to attach to. Um, so it's definitely a war of attention, and. It would seem to me that the more education you have, the more brainwashing you have in that respect, it's harder for you to let go of those beliefs and harder for you to see through the bullshit. Whereas a lot of people who haven't gone through that kind yeah. of education come to a realization a lot quicker, is my feeling. Um, but unfortunately, we need as many as possible, right? In all fields and all walks of life to, to make a difference, I think. I, I would deny the fact that you think they're winning. I think five years ago they were definitely winning but I, I, I at least see the last five years as uh, people making inroads to 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 make that fantasy crumble um so in a way I, I feel we are winning we're just maybe not winning as fast as we wanted to or making it crumble as quickly as we wanted to yeah probably saying that they're winning is putting in the wrong terminology just that at the moment they're still well ahead <laughs> it, it, it's I mean, you've only got to look at any attempts we that the people that are that have come to the same realization or to similar realizations that we've come to are still struggling to be able to put their point. It's still been it's still a it's still a struggle to discuss it. It's, yep. um, but not because yeah. they're bringing any good arguments to the table, right? Oh, no. I mean, all of these no. have been so thoroughly debunked, if you ask me. 
um, all their you know nonsense. Um, but yeah. the, the problem is just seems to still be a bit that there's a lot of gatekeeping going on. When you see the people they throw at the flat earth proponents, I mean, they're, they're confused, bewildered boys or, or they're on task or, you know, they're smack addicts that, you know, are being forced to do something that, I mean, they, they don't have any real people, right? They have that, that, that gateway of, of science educators, and then after that, there's nothing. There's no real conversation with real physicists, real mathematicians, real engineers, right? That, that's being gatekeeped. If you ask me. Yeah. Where are they? Where if, are they? Yeah. You, you can't even invite them into a discussion. They won't, they won't uh, turn up. They, they stay right away from it. And they're using ridiculous excuses like it's a ridiculous discussion. I don't want to be involved in it. You know, okay, you're really stupid, so I don't want to talk to you. Hang on. That just doesn't make any sense to me. No, and I think that's the, the point we're trying to make here as well a little bit, is how do you get those people who are currently staying away from the argument um, or, or staying away from the discussion, um, they don't want to be involved in it, how do you make them come to the table and talk? Yes, they're being gatekeeped. Yes, they're just, you know, coming out with clown shows to... To, to try and stop people looking at this seriously. But I, I think, you know, if we can show academics, I say that in, in, in a, how should I say? I, I don't mean that they're smarter you than anybody them. else. <laughs> huh? Well, because they're not, I right? I mean, yeah. yeah, sorry. I'm I mean, say that in an insulting way. <laughs> yeah, fucking brainwash wankers, yeah? Um, like I used to be, yeah? Um, I'll say it in an insulting way. Well, you know, I went, it. I went through that education, Glenn. I mean, you know that. I don't make a big yep. deal of it, but yeah, I studied maths and physics, have a degree in, in both, right? Double major. Um, I've went through the complete brainwashing, and you come out the other side and you believe it all. But you know, when you get older and you look at the things sensibly, and then then it's all crap, right? Um, so yeah, how do we wake well, the rest of these people up? It's it's like. You, you, me, Dell, other people that we talk talk through these things with, we were all in that same boat. I mean, not not necessarily highly educated or anything. Well, not not a part of. Like I never studied physics or mathematics or anything like that at, at above high school level, and but I still was in that same area. I still believed exactly what. These other people are still believing now. I, I sometimes struggle to understand how people can believe absurdities, but then when I think about it, I used to. Yep. So how do you stop it? You know, what makes things different? What makes the common man um, uh, understand this easier than a, a brainwashed academic? I mean, is it just that simple that they, 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 they hold a belief um, and they're heavily invested in it? Um, I don't think so. I think the main thing is that they're inattentive, uh, inattentive to the arguments. Um, and there's so many examples of that where you see intelligent people questioning certain things. Um, take the crisis in chemistry, you know, synthetic chemistry, where you have a lot of people, you know, looking, seeing problems with it, highlighting these problems, but still not following everything to, to a more logical conclusion and understanding that the flat earth is also a topic that needs to be discussed openly oh, and honestly. See that, in, see that in, in, in just about any subject matter. You look at the GS interests. There's yep. sort of halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, yep. they're looking at a lot of the same data, they're looking at a lot of the same um, phenomenon, phenomena that, that we are. But still coming to um, the conclusion that the flat Earth is somehow or another ridiculous doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, but they're but they're well on board with realizing that the heliocentric model is an absurdity. Yeah, so how do we, you know, uh, again, use examples um, and, and show people where they, they have to be looking deeper or where there's a fault in their reasoning? 
um, especially those people who are already applying good logic and reasoning to pointing out certain fallacies, how do you take them a step further? What's stopping them, you know, looking at the rest of it the way it should be looked at? Um, that, that's, that's a the, really good question. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think it is one of the fundamental questions so that more people will get involved and we can get more numbers and more momentum, right? So, um, yeah, I think so. So one of the examples uh, that that I think of of mental objects, um, and just to go back to that classification, um, mental objects are objects of thought. Uh, mathematics is a prime example of that. We really should do another video concentrating on that, pointing out how yeah. mathematical physics um, is a mental object and and how it shouldn't be given that reverence that's given to it. Um, but in in this uh, um, talk. Uh, Glenn, I thought it would be good to to show some of the um, the faulty reasoning processes in in politics, um, just to take a contemporary example. Um, I know there's other ones we've talked about too. Um, identity politics being one, right? You know, um, for me, that's a very clear uh, mental object. We're supposed to believe that there's more genders than just two. Although all our sensibles and all our physicals point to the fact that there only are these two. So the facts and evidence is on the side yep. of it being a binary system, right? You've got two fucking choices. And yet the mental object that's been sold to us in terms of identity politics is that you can have up to 70 or be whatever you want to be, right? Which is purely yep. nonsense and goes against evidence and physical facts, right? I, I, I... I can't even imagine how I would respond to somebody that told me that they're non-binary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the older, I'm non the older you get, the more ridiculous it seems. <laughs> 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 I've had this argument with my daughters, yeah. Um, and, and, well, that's and, the so many of the young people today are taking it on board. And to them, it sort of makes sense, you know. It's always couched in terms of being fair and being reasonable and you know it's all about compassion and loving and caring and that they're, they're absolute masters of of changing those sorts of emotions or using those sorts of emotions to get people to believe in these absurdities it's the same thing as they did with health and safety the same thing that they did with greenism and the yep. environment Yep. You know, it's it's emotional manipulation at the base level, right? Um, yeah. Is what they're, they're doing, as you say. The facts and evidence doesn't support it. The, the facts and evidence has been twisted with stories and emotionally manipulated um, uh, memes, let's say, to to get people, you know, uh, um, defending it on the side of yeah, as you say, you know, I feel really good if I'm I'm on this side, you know, and yeah, I want to be fair and everybody's nice and it's all fluff and and shite, yeah. There's, when yeah. you look at the content, the the fact that people are actually looking at that Greta Thunberg and sort of saying, "Wow, what a brave little girl!" and all I think is, "What a poor little girl!" What they've done to her, I mean, yep. that horrifies me. That it, well, basically, it horrifies me what they're doing to the children these days. I yep. mean, the stuff that's going on with this transgender bullshit in the schools is um, unbelievable to me. I, I just, yeah, it's sickening. Yeah, and I think these are all good examples of, um, I'm just gonna share my desktop, um, are all good examples of, of mental objects, right? Where yeah. ideas and concepts are being, you know, given to us, which um, when you, they don't jive with, with sensible facts and with physical facts, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, uh, identity politics, climate change, um, all of those things are are examples of of just brainwashing mental objects and and a divorce of from sensible and physical ones. <laughs> divorce from reality. Yeah, absolutely. And particularly divorce from common sense reality. And that brings me to the to the example I wanted to show from um, um, from politics. So I'm just going to play this little clip. Let me just find the right place, uh, Glenn. Um, 
and I'll just, while I'm doing that, I'll just try and give an intro. So Tucker Carlson is a political pundit news anchor um, in America, um, works for Fox News, um, and uh, is somebody who's constantly pointing out um, the lunacy, let's say, of the Democrats in America and their political ideologies. And he does that, at least from what I can see, using a lot of common sense um, uh, uh, principles to, to knock down the nonsense that they're telling us. Um, and yeah. one of the big ones at the moment in America, and that's why a contemporary story is, is the impeachment stuff, right? Um, yep. And you can see here that it's the impeachment charade and Democrats have been detached from reality. Now, um, now there's a lot of parallelisms to, to what's happening with the flat earth and, and the pseudoscience that, you know, globe that we've been taught and, and the real evidence that we have for a flat and level, you know, motionless level earth. So um, I just thought this was quite a good thing to, to show. Um, and I'll maybe just play the clip first. Um, um, and, and then we can come back to discussing this a little bit. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to take off my headphones because otherwise I think the. Can you still hear me, Glenn? Yep. Okay. Let me just turn up my sound here and play this clip. Office until voters can decide to remove him from office if they want. Okay. So what is the president accused of doing? Well, in case you've forgotten, it's that Donald Trump may have delayed military aid to the. Hold on, I'm just going to sell skip. out, he says, of our I believe he could defend that in a rational conversation, but it doesn't even stand out under the current standards of political rhetoric. There's a lot of talk like that all of a sudden. The entire impeachment saga, in fact, has become detached from reality. Here are the most basic facts about it. Democrats do not have the votes to remove President Trump from impeachment is to before it even begins. And by the way, Democracy is working just fine. Hearings on impeachment. Half the country backed impeachment, converted impeachment. Well, of the of those data, elite Democrats still will not admit it. In the face of all those data. So I found the spot now, Glenn. Sorry. Let me just enter yeah. this with, with the fact that. Um, um, when the Democrats have now tried to impeach President Trump, um, then at the beginning the country was split. Yeah, half of them think he's a bad guy um, and that the idea, the mental object that he's a Russian spy and, and you know, out to harm the, the American constitution and democracy and we're in global peril because of this guy. That's the mental object that the Democrats are selling. Um, yep. And the facts and the evidence that back that up is just not there. Right now, um, at least that's as far as I can see. Yeah. Um, so and, and at the beginning, the poll was the country was divided. And now after this impeachment process on the television hype by the media, <clears throat> it would seem that the um, popularity to impeach Trump has fallen. And, and that kind of is, is a real problem for the Democrats because they obviously hoped it would increase with their political and media charade then it would actually, you know, more people would want him impeached and removed from office. Um, and uh, so, so Tucker Carlson's pointing out the fact that um, the latest polls are suggesting that uh, Americans don't believe that he should be impeached anymore. And from his point of view, it's a little bit that um, the, the people can see through the bullshit, right? They can see through the crap that's been played to them um, via the media. And they can see through this political ideology that the Democrats are pushing. Um, and there's more and more people saying, no, wait a minute, we don't believe your identity politics. We don't believe your climate change. And we certainly don't believe your impeachment charade. And so, so and this is just a little clip about polling, about, you know, uh, and when people get asked, you know, um, do you believe? So I'm just going to play it from here on because I think this is the relevant bit could not be clearer on this question. And yet, even in the face of all those data, elite Democrats still will not admit it. They're literally in denial. Watch Democratic Party cheerleader Jeffrey Tubin attack his own company's polling 
when it doesn't match what he believes must be true. You see a decline from our last poll in Democratic support uh, from 90% down to 77%. Can I just say to my twin brother that I don't believe that poll for one second. What part do you The 90 to 77%. I, I, you know, it, it, it's just I don't believe it. Well, like, it makes no sense that that number would change like that. I mean, you know, life means, life has thrown us that polls are sometimes wrong. And, David, that poll is wrong. Just because I said wow. so, okay? <laughs> Why don't you believe? Well, just because I don't. Because I look out my window and I see the horizon. That means it's flat. You can tell me the earth is round, but I just don't believe it. Enough with your dumb numbers and your scientific theories. I just don't believe it, says the legal analyst. Okay. What you're watching, obviously, is one man degrade himself, but it's bigger than that. It's the definition of ideological extremism, and that's the inability to change course no matter what the evidence tells you. So that's the point at which this is no longer politics, of course. We left that a long time ago. What you're looking at is religion. And of course, being the Democratic Party and their religion, it's always the exact opposite of what they claim it is. Just going to put my headphones back on, Glenn. Okay. Can you hear me again? Yep. Yeah, okay. Loud and clear. So I hope the video came over okay. The clip? It did seem to be skipping a little bit here, but that could be my internet connection, so I don't think it's an issue. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it seems to play here okay. Yeah, so that was a little clip, and there's quite a lot of interesting little aspects in there, which I thought it would just make sense to, to break down, look at the reasoning processes of the individual actors in that little the snippet, yeah? Because yeah. I think it might help, um, yeah, the overall, um, how should I say, discernment that we need to make. Yep. So the first thing that is uh, is maybe obvious is, or, or at least, well, let me just point out what I see in that clip is that we have the democratic people um, seeing the numbers go down, less support now to impeach Trump as before, and appalling, which is a theoretical scientific consensus. You're asking people a question. Um, you're gathering how many people answered certain questions, and then you're making a tally of it. You're doing a calculation, showing a percentage, and that percentage is dropping. And um, you could argue that, th- that that's facts and evidence, because if you agree that these polls are done in an honest, open fashion, then yeah, you could call that facts and evidence. I'm not going to discuss the science of polling at the moment, right? That's not what this is about. But the the Democrats are are clearly, obviously not happy with that fact. And then you've got this guy basically saying, well, I just don't believe these polls. Polls can be wrong. Um, It can't possibly be such that the American people um, don't see that Trump is a is a bad guy, that he's a Russian imposter, that he's a he's a Russian asset, that he's he's a global peril. Right, that you know he's a threat to security and democracy. This guy is basically arguing that no, that can't be the case. Americans are smart; they can see that Donald Trump is a complete and utter, you know, uh, a threat to us all. Yeah, um, yep. and he's basically saying I don't believe the facts and evidence. Right, so that, yep. that's the one part of that conversation. Um, yeah, he's, he's got something that he actually believes is the truth, and. The fact that the facts and evidence are pointing out that that's not correct is means nothing to him. Immaterial to him, exactly. Yeah. He's prepared to, to to throw all that away and, and hold on to his preconceived belief that one, Trump is an imposter and a Russian asset, and that yes, the American people can also see that. There's no way that yeah. you know that poll can be right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, the interesting aspect there, I think, is that there's a lot of people out there who look at the facts and evidence and don't see what he sees, right? Yes. Um, and and that there are a lot of people looking, uh, have been overloaded with identity politics, with climate, with all the hysteria and fear and, 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 and ideological threats and see that these are just a bunch of presumptions and opinions and none of it is really based in facts and evidence. Because if you look at the thing closely, then that's what I see too. I don't see any facts and evidence that support what they're saying about Trump. 
Um, I'm not saying I agree with everything. He might be, you know, uh, um, some of his comments and his opinions and his attitudes. But, but all of that doesn't matter, right? Because we're talking here about the content. We're not talking about whether we like the guy or not. And they seem to have twisted no, into that about, emotional manipulation again. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's talking. It's talking about how many people believe the story that's being told. Yeah. So, so we've got that guy clinging, clinging to the mental object that that Trump is a is a Russian asset, and he just can't believe that the American public can't see it as well, and that's why the evidence must be wrong, the polls wrong, right? Yeah. So then Tucker, you know, answers to that, or Tucker's looking at this, Tucker Carlson, and and he's saying, um, well, hold on, um, yeah, these guys are denying the evidence and clinging to a belief like a religion, but what Tucker is then doing, and here's a smart guy as far as I'm concerned. There's Tucker Carlson, a man applying common sense to break down the political rhetoric and sophistry and pointing out that facts and evidence are not meeting this ideolo ideology that they're giving, right? Yeah. Um, so he's coming at it very much with common sense principles, right? Yeah. Um, and yet he's guilty of doing a logical fallacy in that he's then bringing the flat earth analogy um, and saying it's like waking up in the morning and seeing the world's flat and denying all the globe evidence that's there, right? So, yeah. and, and that's where I would like to point out to Mr. Carlson, if you ever meet this, that, you know, you're guilty of falling into the same trap that you're accusing them of. Um, you're holding on to a preconceived belief that science, as we know it today, cannot be doubted, yeah? And that your senses are wrong and that your self-evident, you know, constitution, inalienable constitution is somehow faulty and you're throwing all that out the window um, to hold on to a preconceived notion of, of you think that science has already shown uh, the flat earth to be nonsense and it must be a globe, yeah? But yeah. I would argue that Tucker is, is, is showing cognitive dissonance there. Well, not quite cognitive dissonance. I think, no, that's the wrong word. He's inattentive to the fact that he should also be questioning the, 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 the science because we can see that it's pseudoscience and he yet cannot see that it is that, right? Yeah, he, he can't see that he's doing exactly the same as what he's criticizing the other gentleman for doing. Yeah. Absolutely. He's holding on to a, a belief about the globe and, and science, and he's denying um, the common sense aspect of things that, you know, yes, the horizon is always level. Um, and again, I would point back to the fact that why is Tucker inattentive to this fact? Why does he believe so strongly that the globe has so much evidence um, and, and that um, he doesn't recognize that he just has a belief in that. There is no supporting facts and evidence in between, right? He seems to be inattentive to that whole scenario. He's not even looking at it for whatever reason. He's just falling well, into that trap of r ridiculing flat earthers, right? Yeah, well, it, I mean, it's probably an indication that he's still deeply into the religion of scientism. Yep. He's, he's still he's still locked in there. He's he's able to he's obviously got the faculty and the ability to see those sorts of errors in another person's thinking and dealing ways of dealing with a, an issue, but he's blind to the fact that he's doing it himself. Yeah, he's not. He's just not attending to it. He's not thinking about it. He's. And I think that's very symptomatic of people, again, if I want to call them academia or intelligentsia or people with a, a higher education, as they like to call it, um, it seems to be a problem with them more than with others because once, the, once they can, I mean, he can obviously apply common sense, good logic and reasoning to point out bullshit and political rhetoric, but he's not capable of taking that same reasoning process using those same faculties and applying it to the science that he's been told is correct, right? About the fundamental question of where he lives, what it's all about, and you know, what the hell is this? So for me, he's not taking it to, 
to the, the further logical steps that he should be taking to. He's stopping it there in his domain of expertise, which is political punditry, right? And he's not applying that to the rest of his, of, of his life as he knows it. <laughs> well, it, it might be another form of compartmentalization. Where, yep. Yeah, he, he's stuck in his political compartment where he has a good understanding, is able to um, analyse it and speak on it um, intelligently. But when it comes to another field, be, t turns himself back into what? A... Um, a, a pleb, a pleb. <laughs> the vulgar. <laughs> yeah, it, it's sad to see, and it, it's it's not like he's a um, a rare example. It's um, he, he's definitely j just a, a an example of what the majority of high level thinkers. Well, I don't even know where you dare call him a high-level thinker. Um, I don't know what you call him. A political pundit. Yep. I just think it's symptomatic of, of, of so many areas that people look at things, uh, at least in the domain that they're familiar with, but they don't apply the same reasoning to, to let's call it the overall domain, right? When we're talking about yep. natural science or, or natural philosophy. Yeah. Or even just another field. Yeah, the overall and any other field, compete not competing field, but any other field of um, study. Yep. Yeah, and one of the things that is is extremely frustrating there, I find, is is the the flip that's been done. So he talks himself about, you know, the, if the Democrats are telling you something that somebody and somebody is lying or cheating, then it's because it's really the Democrats that are doing it. They're accusing you or are accusing other people of doing the very things that they're guilty of, right? So yep. the, there's a kind of flip, um, uh, and he's pointing that out, that the Democrats are flipping things on with 80 degrees, right? And at the same time, he's done exactly the same thing. You know, yep. the evidence from our Constitution, this, the, 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 our senses, um, and the things that we know to be objectively true in the world, He's now denying them in favor of the globe science, which is basically just a lot of images and stories and mathematical equations. We know that, right? Yeah. There is no demonstrable, practical, tangible proof of those things that they're claiming, right? So, yeah. and, and he's, he's also flipping it around, saying, you know, ha, 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 laughing. You know, I wake up in the morning and I see the horizon and it must be flat and I'm going to deny all the evidence. So, yeah. you know, he's guilty of doing exactly the same thing. And it's for that, that's what I find frustrating from intelligent people are people who are obviously engaging their brain in a certain you know, domain um, or field of knowledge, but not applying that across the board. <laughs> and also that have a large audience. Mm. That just, as well. Uh, people like him that have got a large audience uh, doing those sorts of things when they could be actually stopping and thinking attending to what they're actually thinking, what they're actually saying and looking into it a bit more deeply. Yep. Sort of saying, well, this guy, the guy that I'm discussing, talking about at the moment is obviously not thinking straight. But at the same time, he's not thinking straight. Yep. And I'd like to, to sorry, on you go. No, you're right. No, I was just going to say, I'd, I'd, I'd like to take it, also back so it's actually now to focus in very specifically on the example that he gave that i can look out and see a level horizon yeah and for me that yeah. is um evidence um that we cannot be living on a on a ball on the absurdity that that's being claimed to us right because as we rise then there's no way that that horizon should lie with us and remain level right it, it you know it has to fall away on all sides of us so, you know, the, yeah. the very fact that, that he's bringing up is also counterintuitive, right, to our constitution. Yep. And we've talked about this before, that visibles is one of the key areas that has been identified, as far as I'm concerned, where that deception takes place. The measurement of visible objects is being confused 
with the measurement of physical objects um, and that these two things cannot just be equivocated. Yeah, You can't just apply two-dimensional mathematical um, um, theories and concepts about visible objects that you see immediately over to three-dimensional physical balls that are supposed to exist in a vacuum, right? Oh. That, 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 that's, that's a gap in his knowledge, probably, right? As to, and, and, you know, him understanding that might help wake him up to exactly what he's saying and, and realizing that he shouldn't be ridiculing flat earthers about that topic. He should be understanding how his constitution works, how visible geometry is applied to mathematical stories um, so that he can, you know, um, yeah, see through that and apply the rest of his reasoning process. In a way, I suppose it's understandable because he, what I was just thinking then is that he's basically just applying a meme. He, he, he's not thinking about it at all. It's actually a meme that is prevalent throughout society at the moment. Yep. And he's... He's just applying it or using it as um, an, anal an analogy to point out what he thinks is a ridiculous situation or yep. a, 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 the way something's being dealt with ridiculously. Yep. And I mean, just to, to, to go to, to uh, so uh, I wanted to, there was one other little thing that we, that I looked at. Yeah, so here it is here. I just want to bring this into the picture too. Um, this is from the Federalist. Um, here's your quick guide to the American founders mentors, right? Now, there's a, and I think there's a, there's a connection here, which I want to bring, bring up, you know, everybody can make their own mind as to how important this is. But I, I think it's a, it's something that I'd like to just highlight here um, and it's the fact that the founding fathers of Ameri of the American Constitution um, and it's highly relevant to this whole impeachment uh, thing that the at the moment there's an argument within the uh, let's call it the US government structures ie the three branches of government the executive branch the judicial branch and the legislative branch Right, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and then you know basically the White House. That these three branches were set up by the founding fathers um, of America via the Bill of Rights, via the Constitution, as the best possible society uh, to live in. So when America was getting set up, they looked at you know let's say the the monarchies and 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 all the other setups of a society and decided to themselves we can do this better here in america and we're going to do it this way three legislative branches or three branches of government and this was if you like the main input of the founding fathers as they're called yeah yeah so sorry i i'm, I'm not a great historian on american constitution but i'm just trying to summarize the the main thing i'm also not a political pundit but um very obvious here is that the Scottish Enlightenment and Scottish common sense realism was one of the biggest influences on the American founders. In fact, Jefferson, Madison, and Hamilton, um, the people who are uh, the architects of the whole American legislation, were basically uh, had a Scottish common sense education. Yeah. Um, yep. And this article is quite good. It kind of highlights um, who taught them. Um, where the influence came from, um, from uh, basically Presbyterian Scots um, who were rooted in the Scottish common sense realism philosophy at the time of the Scottish Enlightenment. Um, and that was carried over into America, into the schooling uh, or into the universities. Um, and all the founding fathers enjoyed that education and that also that philosoph ph philosophical thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of points in here where um, every American intellectual was a Scottish disciple. Um, and, you know, to get right back to, you know, some... Before, uh, sorry, on you go. I was just going to say before the Civil War, that is. Yep. Yep. Before the Civil War. Absolutely. Um, and this guy in his article is quite rightly pointing out um, 
one of the main sentences, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And this guy highlights self-evident and unalienable. Yeah. And mm -hmm. those are some of the things um, or some of the key points that come from Scottish common sense realism. In fact, self-evident is what Thomas Reed coined. Yeah. And unalienable as well, I think. Correct. Yeah, they both come from Reed, as far as I know. I self-evident definitely did. Yep. Unalienable, I'm not really sure, but I think so. Because the, the main thing that people can read this article, we can link it in the description of this um, um, uh, video here. But um, yeah, it's, it's only a it's only a very short read, but it's ac it's actually excellent read. It's pretty good. Yeah. I like it. The Common Sense Nation Unlocking the Forgotten Power of the American Idea. This guy's done a few books on it. Um, so so I, I think what I'm pointing out is that the Americans pride themselves with their founding fathers. The founding fathers are, are rooted in a Scottish common sense realism um, and also the moral philosophy of the time that basically came from the pens of Smith and Reed. Yeah? Um, yep. So that you know, if America is looking to use common sense as an argument against, you know, phony impeachments, a democratic ideology, then I would, you know, how should I say, ask them also to apply the same reasoning to science and not to be taken for fools from the pseudoscience that has emerged in the last couple of hundred years. Yeah. And exactly. I think one of the things that's incredibly important um, and um, is read, and again, I'm back to the, the guy who, you know, you can, I, I think I could argue that the, man, the main guy that was influencing the Scottish Enlightenment and Scottish common sense realism was Thomas Reed. You know, he was the man, right? And if you it look at, seems that way. if you look also at his mathematical papers, the fact that Thomas Reed was the guy who literally studied visible geometry properly and the tie in to Riemannian geometry and how mathematics is used in quantification. These were all things that read in a lot of papers that are not obvious and not well known, um, expounded on, and they've been relegated a little bit to, um, oh shit, I've got somebody at the door, hold on. <laughs> I'll just need to stop this recording and then start it again, Glenn, yeah, just one no second. Worries. Okay, it says it's recording again. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, it was just a neighbor coming to invite me to a party. Getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's having 50th parties, 50 year old parties, and stuff like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just wanted to go back to this uh, article. Um, so, I th you know, I think the summary of this is that. Looking at um, the fact that American is rooted in, in a certain common sense realism, seeing that Tucker Carlson is also arguing with common sense principles against, you know, political ideology, but still not applying it to, to uh, science. Um, I think one of the reasons behind that is that a lot of the common sense realism and stuff from the Scottish Enlightenment, especially work around visible geometry, human psychology, and basically um, things that, that Reed was um, a main uh, a powerhouse for, inquiry into the human mind and the principles of common sense and um, active powers, intellectual powers. So a lot of his writings um, are very much rooted in, in, let's say, the American way of life, yeah? But at the yeah. same time, you know, the fact that they're not being applied to science has some reasons, I think, in that Reed's papers are not being properly published. Um, they're not being properly discussed in, in the scientific world. Um, and that you can then see where somebody like Tucker Carlson, whilst using common sense to shoot down ideology, just can't attend to the scientific problem that he has in front of him that he can't even see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking just when I was reading this article myself, the bit where it says that before the Civil War, so many of the people were um, 
every yeah every American intellectual was a Scottish. Uh, what is, you just went past it. Yep, a Scottish yeah. disciple. Every American intellectual was a Scottish disciple. Uh, up until the Civil War, it makes me think that you know part of the purpose of the Civil, civil War. You know, it says here before the Civil War, every major American collegiate intellectual was a disciple of Scottish common sense realism. Yep. Then it changed. Yep. There might be a reason for that then, or at least the fact the Civil oh. War seemed to have interrupted that intellectual movement at least, yeah? Well, and even they mentioned, I don't understand why Hume is mentioned in this article, because he was so diametrically opposed to Reed's well, not even just diametrically opposed. He he actually, in a letter to Reed, says something about how he tried to read the inquiry, but he can't really give him a um, a good critique of it because he doesn't understand mainly the stuff about the geometry of visibles. Yep. Yep. Well, that's a good point. You know, uh, Hume was very much more a kind of guy, you know, a, a proponent of I idealism rather yeah. than, you know, Reedian realism. Uh, which, yep, yep. So anyway, uh, you know, I, I just thought that that um, that information about, you know, the American Constitution, and you see a lot of parallels in the, the Constitution of the United States of America. Um, and when we talk about the Constitution of how we are built, Phys the physiological aspect of our own, you know, body and sentience, and how our, our how our senses work and how our faculties work, then that talk about self-evident truths is very important, right? Because as yeah. the guy points out here in the article, if these two words were not in the American Declaration here, right, or in the um, um, then then yeah, then it would be a completely different sentence, right? <laughs> You know, yeah. they, they, these things are important, yeah, um, yeah. and if not we, just we, to be washed away. That, if you read that sentence out loud, it does not have the same power without self-evident and unalienable. Yep. It doesn't doesn't say the same thing. It doesn't have the same power. It doesn't, obviously, doesn't mean the same thing. Yep. So anyway, I didn't want to jump too much. People can read this and take what they want from it in terms of, of, you know, where I think the influence is. Um, I, just, I just think it was very evident then in this video from Tucker Carlson, right? Where, again, he's, you know, just to reiterate the point, he's, he's tearing down or, you know, making the democratic ideology crumble by attacking it with some common sense principles, showing that facts and evidence don't support it, um, discerning uh, bullshit, um, and pointing that out in, in, I think, an effective way in that political domain, but guilty as hell of not applying those same thought processes and reasoning processes to where he believes he lives. And that yeah. seems to be a problem <laughs> For you know, all people that have, that are academically supposed to be smart and intelligent and 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 clever, um, but they can't get past that hurdle for for whatever reason, Glenn. Yeah, and yeah. I wish I knew how to to wake them up. One thing is giving them some more knowledge. So, for example, the geometry of visibles would empower him to understand better why the horizon is always flat and how that cannot possibly support a globular theory, and that he should be looking at those self-evident truths, those parts of his inalienable constitution that he has, and applying them, and not just throwing it out and believing some image on the screen. Um, you know, that, that, that for me seems to be, um, yeah, a complete, you know, failure in his reasoning process, right? Probably that, that's definitely true, but probably simpler or easier for him would be to apply it to the absurdities of the the globe model that he's that he's actually putting up against yep. his own what what his own um, what he sees himself what what he actually looks at yep and and why is he not doing it 
you know, one is just, okay, I don't, I'm not interested in science necessarily, but I've also seen him have Bill Nye on there and, and him ripping into Bill Nye about Bill Nye's climate nonsense, yeah? I mean, again, there's good videos of Tucker Carlson dismantling that as well, but he doesn't, again, doesn't want to go near space, space balls, or the general acceptance of, of, of the current scientific thinking, right? He's not prepared to, to question that. And, yeah. you know, why? Why not? I don't get it. Yeah. Well, that's probably what this whole discussion is really about, is asking ourselves, how do we get through to somebody like that? How do, how do yep. we get through that, the wall? The wall that seems to be built up. I mean, in some, some cases, well, in a lot of cases, I'm, I tend to believe that the people that you would be trying to deal with are gatekeepers themselves, whether they know it or not. I used to sort of wonder whether a gatekeeper could be a gatekeeper without knowing it, but I'm sure they can. I think so. Absolutely. You can be thoroughly yeah. convinced of something and, and, you know, be say very, very, you know, how should I say good at defending that with lots of arguments that you've learned without necessarily it being an agenda of yours to do it. Right. Yeah. Which, you know, yeah, and yeah. when I look at Tucker Carlson, I see an honest guy pointing out the political nonsense that's happening. Um, so I don't think he's gatekeeping per se. I just think he's inattentive to the to the rest of the facts that he should be looking at. Yeah, he's being honest, but not with the truth. <laughs> Very well put. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and how do you take people then, and and and, or how do you con not convince them? I'm not looking to convince anybody necessarily. How do you get them to to look at their own reasoning processes and then apply it properly? Yeah, yeah. It's no good trying to tell them that you know something and that that they should know. Yeah, it's, it's well, that's always a bad idea. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you have to get them to question themselves. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and it's. Like I think we were talking about it the other day when we mentioned critical thinking, getting them to think critically. But even that's an issue these days because the powers that be have been able to even usurp the meaning of critical thinking. Yeah. You know, they, they'll, they'll tell you, you know, you can have both sides of an argument claiming that they're, they're the ones that are doing the critical thinking. Yep. Um, I don't know if we should just stop it here, Glenn. Yeah. Or maybe the subject is enough. It maybe just more of a kind of introduction to the topic. We can come back to it maybe at some point. I don't yeah. want to make it too complicated well, I, somehow. I, I feel it's a complicated well, subject. Well, I still think it comes down to that. We're trying to deal with the question of how do we get through to these people? I yep. mean, without making it sound like, I mean, as soon as I say something like that, I think to myself, I sound like a propagandist. Um, and, and, and for me, it's not about being a propagandist. It's about, well, oh, crikey, you start getting into a bit of a mire there, don't you? you? Start getting into a bit of a, a bit of a hole when you start trying to think about getting some, getting, getting somebody to think a particular way. Yep. No, I mean. Once you start talking like that, you definitely sound like <laughs> you're into PR and public and propaganda or same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, again, I don't want anybody to, to uh, um, not think for themselves, right, or fall into groupthink or believe what I say or what anybody else says. I think that for me, this is about just pointing out at least what I can see in the reasoning processes of people and um, I don't know, trying to give them a little push or a little th sow a seed or whatever that they can think more about it because well, it, they have to come to the realisation themselves. Yeah. yeah, well, it'd be an ex interesting sort of experiment to see if, if there was a way that you could actually get a guy like Tucker Carlson to actually look at things differently. Yeah. To, you know, well, maybe not even differently, just to look at things. Just to attend. Yeah. Not tell him how to attend. Not tell him what what to think. Not don't, don't sort of say, oh look, you know, have a look at this, have a look at that, have a look at that, and this, you know, obviously this means that, and obviously that means this. Don't try that sort of stuff. Just try and get him to stop and think. 
look at what he's just said and look at it from a different point of view. That's probably it, getting people to look at things from a slightly different point of view. People don't want to. People don't want to change their point of view. I agree. I mean, people are comfortable where they are. They don't want uncertainty. They, they, they feel, you know, a comfort blanket, you know, with their current beliefs and ideologies. And, and I've said this before, I think it was Goethe that said, that, you know, thinking is schwer, you know, thinking is hard. When it gets uncomfortable for you, you, you tend to leave it, right? So, I mean, maybe he's experienced that as well. Oh, all right, I don't want to talk about too much about this or that, you know. Um, let me just stay yeah. in my political domain. You know, I know what I'm talking about there. Um, but yep. yeah, I think they need to move past that. And, you know, I just want to reiterate one point. Um, so for all the academic, uh, um, achievements or, um, intellectual apparent prowess, um, these guys are no different from anybody else on this planet, uh, Glenn, right? Um, it yeah. doesn't matter what your education is. We all are natural scientists, you know, a la Bacon, a la Jardin. Yeah. Um, that yeah. what, what, what we all bring to the table, the same offices of reason and logic, the same faculties uh, that we have in our senses. Um, nobody is different from anybody else so that um, he shouldn't be giving all that power away to some guys in our lab and a white coat who can do better mathematics than him. You know, he really needs to keep that, how should I say, for himself and use exactly the same faculties that we all have to discern the reality that we're in. Um, and yeah. he's guilty of giving it away, yeah? Well, it, it comes down to something else that we were discussing the other day, which is what's the difference between them and us? How come we've been able to come from a similar situation where, like you say, it, it doesn't matter what level of education you're at or what level of understanding you're at, you've come from a situation where you had a a certain set of beliefs and you would defend them to the death basically <laughs> and they still do and what 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 happened with us why why were we able to accept it why what's the difference what that's that, i reckon that's where the answer lies the answer in being able to get people to understand or to to at least look at things to see what's going on is to find out what the difference is between us and them, you know, I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure out what, I know what, I know that I was like that. I know that I was a rabid atheist who, and a, a, a great believer in Einstein and the, 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 the pseudoscience, I believed it was all real. I, the Big Bang, everything, I believed in all of that stuff. Me too. I actually thought I had the facts to back it up because I studied mathematical physics. <laughs> I'm even worse, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I'm exactly yeah, with you. So, yeah. so yeah, well, there you go. You, you <clears throat> believed you had those facts, and these people still do believe they have those facts. Yep. What actually happened? What happened to you to make that stop? Well, for me, it was about understanding the roots of mathematical physics, right, and understanding. The, the these differences the separations in the sciences um, um and, and looking c much closer at how mathematics has been turned into this godlike um um i don't know godlike theory godlike concept um godlike proof and evidence um and you know so so for me it was very much that also looking at thomas reed and, and the visible geometry and understanding how those manipulations um, have been used in the global deception um, to to equate visible um, phenomena with real physical substances, and that's only done by yeah. mathematical trickery, if you ask me. Nothing else, right? And I can see yeah. that better than others, maybe. Um, so, so yeah. it certainly helped me come to the point saying, "Wait a minute, that's all nonsense. What I've learned. If I look at the you know the real world facts, practical, demonstrable stuff, then that does not apply." So that's the first thing. I, I, I attended to the problem. I inquired into it and I found it to be lacking. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, I think the well, other thing that's important is that I was quite happy to be in a space of not knowing and not needing to attach another belief or to replace it with something else. Sorry, I interrupted you a bit. No, no. I, I was just sort of this. I was sort of well known for diatribes on you know, um, 
why religion was a load of why, why creation itself was a load of bullshit. Yeah, and it was actually looking looking more closely at evolution that got me to think a bit differently. Yep. When I started to see the absurdity of that that whole concept, you know, when you start looking at the structure of a a living cell, and you realise that there's that the the odds of that occurring by chance, um, well, less than nil. Um, you you start to, it does actually open up your mind a bit. You start thinking, well, maybe there's other things that I've been missing as well. And then speaking with you was where I, you you basically passed on that bit about mathematics. The, the, the fact that that theoretical mathematics had taken over physics. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 all the arguments or all the, the so-called science from physics was no longer uh, about uh, uh, objective truths. It was all about mathematical proofs. Yep. And mathematical proofs are proofs of nothing but mathematics. No, exactly right. You know, when we look at physics and we, we say, if, you know, physics is all about studying the motion of bodies, then to apply that to a visible object, right, as opposed to a physical object is where mathematics kicks in so that we can then look at all these visible objects, um, apply mathematics to them, and, and then we try and equivocate them to real physical objects. So, yeah, yeah. physics is about the motion of real bodies. And, and you know, astronomy and cosmology and, and all that thing is about the motions of visible objects. And these two things have to be separate, kept separate. And you have to understand what's yeah. happening in there in terms of the mathematics, in terms of how, you know, human perception works and the quantification of those things. Actually, so we, we made a bit of a start on that with uh, our, um, uh, what was the video? The... Um, Not the great deception. <laughs> the switcheroo. The switcheroo, the great switcheroo, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's probably I, another one that's worth having a bit of a... Uh, we might be losing people who haven't looked at all that stuff, you know, or no, aren't yeah, uh, yeah. up to that, but... Yeah, that's the point. But yeah, so, Tucker, if you ever fucking see this video, then... Um, good work in pointing out you know political ideology but you know please apply your that same diligence to to looking at the pseudoscience that you're being told and again yeah. you know the, the man's done that for climate science and various other things but just can't appear to do it to the shape of the earth <laughs> um, actually yeah. how do you think well do you think he would actually do anything about it if he did think of it think about it and came to the realization that there was something to there was something to it i think so you know, just you know i i can i mean i've never met the man and it's very difficult obviously over youtube to to really know the personality of somebody at all but from what i can see yeah i would say yes he would if he was to come to that realization and and thought about it deeply and he obviously does think deeply about a lot of things right there's no denying that yep. then yeah he could maybe be an ally yeah or somebody yeah. who would, uh, um, yeah, at least uh, be honest in, 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 in inquiring. So, could you imagine the attacks that would go on? Oh, the man <laughs> would be hounded. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Good, my man. I'm just going to stop the recording there. All right, mate.